Praise the Lord. We're here in Silent Baptist Church, Fort Norris. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I ask at this moment if you call your friends, family, those not doing nothing, tell them to jump on our Facebook, our Shiloh Baptist Facebook. Also, we're on YouTube. We'll be glad to have you. We're excited about the word tonight. We believe God has a word designed just for you. Amen. So we have some people in the audience. I want to thank everybody here for coming out. And for you that are watching on the airwaves, we give praise and honor and glory unto you. And I pray that this word tonight will be a blessing unto you. I want to take this time right now to thank my senior pastor for this opportunity. Thank you, Pastor Duncan. He's teaching the violin. Those on the road, you got time to make it a violin. Come on down here. We got an hour of power of the Word of God. Amen. So uh, before we go into what we're going to have a word of prayer, I'm going to ask everyone in the room if they will stand and let us go before the throne of grace. Also, we want to keep our assistant pastor who had knee surgery. Uh, I have the opportunity to be here in this stead. My brother Kato, Pastor Cato Brown and his lovely wife. We want to say hello to them. And we pray for you, praying for a speedy recovery, man. Mission and looking forward to seeing you soon. Let us bow. Eternal God, our Father, our Lord and Savior. Truly, Lord, we want to give you thanks and praise for this day that you have made. Lord, you have brought us this far by faith. And Lord, we can't thank you enough for all you have done. You have kept us, our children, you kept us safe, Lord. In this wicked world with all this hatred and death and killing and shooting that's going on, Lord, we're still here. And Lord, we take this opportunity right now to say thank you, Lord. And Lord, as we dive into your word tonight, Lord, we pray that you will go with us. Lord, wrap me behind the uh, cross of Calvary, Lord. Breathe upon me with your Holy Spirit, Lord. And we pray that the word of God will go forth and fall on good grounds. So that you can produce a good harvest. So Lord, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the body of Christ say amen. amen. Say amen. Let me say I'm glad you're here tonight. I'm glad you're here tonight. Glad you're here tonight. Yes. Y'all don't mind me talking a little bit tonight. Yes. Um, title of the class, you see it behind me. I want to let the saints know. I pray to God that there's some unsaved people that are watching. We welcome you. We pray that you will get something out of this. But I want to talk to the body of Christ for right now. Mm -hmm. The title of this message is, The Lord is Not Your Enemy. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know you say, well, well, we know we say we know God is not our enemy, but sometimes we act like the Lord is our enemy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we act like he's the problem. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we act like God is the problem is because God don't always answer our prayers like we want him to. And the, my subtitle is called Stop Fighting Against Him If You Want to Win. Wow. Amen. You need to stop fighting with Him against God if you want to win. I want to tell you right now, it's a losing battle. Jesus. If you think you can fight God and win, because God has a purpose and a plan designed just for you and I. Until we realize that God's perfect will is what we should be lining our life up with. We're going to have a hard road to climb, I'm telling you. So I pray tonight that you will get something out. I want to let your hair down. Take the halo off your head. Amen. Take the halo off. I ain't saying lay your salvation down. Take the halo off your head. We need to talk tonight. Because as Christians and believers, we do a poor job, hear me, of representing Christ. Because we allow our situations, our strongholds, our struggles, our challenges in life, to stumble, and others are watching. Not only are our children watching, Sister Vicky, but we have our church folks watching. Those babes in Christ, who we tell them God is such a good God. You make the right decision. We hug them at the, we hug them at the altar when they get saved. But as soon as they go in the back, we're running out of the door. Because we still wrestle with God being an enemy. I couldn't tell you tonight, he's not your enemy. God loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But if you have your Bibles tonight, I need you to turn with me uh, to the book of John 11 chapter. John 11 chapter. I just need you to have it right there. While we go through our introduction, I just need to plant it there because that's where we're going to find our text tonight. 
And on the first sheet, on the cover sheet you see here, is St. John, NIV version. I'm sticking with the NIV tonight. Uh, chapter 11, verse 21. It reads, Lord, Martha said unto Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would have died. Now, we all know that Martha had a relationship with God. They were a close family. Uh, Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Jesus loved them. You know, he didn't love them no more. Than, but it said Jesus had a good relationship with them. And their brother had died. And Mary had sent, Mary and Martha had sent word to Jesus. Because they knew the Jesus that spent time with them had power to heal, deliver, to raise the dead, to be able to make a lame walk. They had been with him enough to know that he had power, and if he had been there, that brother Lazarus would have died. I, I, I'm going to hold off a part right there. I'm going to go through my intro, and then we'll get back to that. The Lord is not your enemy. My confession, the title of this message came from my personal my personal struggles. As a man of God, as a believer, as a preacher, as a husband, as a leader on my job, as somebody who represents Christ and also represents manhood, I'm a bang y'all. <laughs> represent manhood, I still found myself wrestling with God. Because Dick Kenny, some things I had prayed for and I wanted, God didn't give it to me when I wanted it. And what we do, we run through this little pity party, and one of the things I believe that comes, that we need to come to grips of is most of the time, when things don't go our way, it seems like our mind is designed to blame someone else for our mistakes or failures. Now, you don't have to admit to it. But remember, God knows everything about us. But when we make a mistake or we have a failure or something we pray for or something we ask God for, we tend to want to blame somebody else for our mistakes. You, you don't have to agree with me here. I, I know what I'm talking about because this is where I live. With, with the facade. You look at me, you're thinking everything all right. But when things don't go one way, when somebody crossed me that now that my, my fuse is so short now, my, I get angry over the simplest things. These are, these are my inner struggles I'm, as a believer. Some things get on my nerves, especially in the world that we live in. When you say that you know it's right from wrong, and we see the world can just do what they want, seem like they get away with it. And as soon as you try to do something, here comes sickness. Here comes con conviction. Here comes somebody pointing their finger at you. Somebody wants to scandalize your name. But the world can do what it wants. The world can say the most hateful things. But as soon as you open your mouth as a believer, they want to define everything you do. Yeah. These things get a little heavy on believers. We wrestle with our attitude. We wrestle with our personality. We short with our family members. The one that loves us, the one that prays for us, the one that intercedes for us. I know where I'm going tonight. Just stay with me, please. We hurt those around us because we think that God is our enemy because God don't answer our foot a prayer when we ask it. God delays it. God put it on pause. When things don't go our way, it seems like our mind is designed to blame someone else. Say what I'm saying. We all go through this. And even though we know in our hearts that our works and what we do has nothing to do with God's undeserved grace. God's undeserved grace. Have you really thought about his undeserved grace? As long as you've been saved, you've been here a minute. You've been serving God for a while. But the reason why we can consider God as an enemy at times because we forget about his undeserved grace. Do you know you wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for God's undeserved grace? Remember, you done done some things since you've been saved that should have disqualified you from going to heaven or being a child of God. But because of his grace, I wish I could get a witness in here. Some of God his amazing grace. Some of our God's mercy that as believers we forget how good God has been to us. And because of our, when we do a self-evaluation of ourselves, we realize and we ask for forgiveness and we ask God to cleanse us from all righteousness. The reason why the tears come in our eyes, the 
The reason why we feel compassion in our heart and say, Lord, forgive me, because we know how good God has been to us in spite of us. Imagine we could put on this screen here what you're thinking right now. Imagine when we can put on this screen when somebody asked you for help. You had all the resources to do it. You did it. But there was an inner spirit. I know what I'm talking about. That inner spirit man that keeps reminding you, I gave this person some money before. They did me dirty before. And you give, and you give a grudge, you give with a grudge heart. And then, Sister Vicky, we still want to ask God to bless us. Stay with me here. God is not your enemy. You won't win fighting with him. The things we say, God, you're not, you're not fair. God, that ain't fair. Lord, why am I going through this mess now? When I was young, when I was out there drinking and carrying on, how come I ain't had no sickness then? God say every oh my God, every time I turn around there's a bone hurt. Cold. Cold just keep chasing. <laughs> Man, it, it, it's something like, Lord, why are you allowing this to happen to us? Mary and Martha had some good times with Jesus in the text. They knew the power of his love. They knew the power of his gift forgiveness. They know when Jesus show up, the situation will change. They knew if he had been there, their brother Lazarus wouldn't have died. Mm. God is not your enemy. You know why God is not your enemy? Because of his love towards you. The enemy can't love without the originator of love, which is God. Because God is love. The enemy can't love you like God can. The originator of love, that's the only way we can love, with his help. And let's listen to you. You know this text, John 3, 16. This is the Amplified Version. It says, so God so loved us a daily prize of the world. Now we say God so loved the world, that made it, that made it say, no, you were in an unsafe, unsafe state when God took you. He said, while you were yet in sin, Christ died for you. Sometimes you got to remind yourself of what God did for you. Every now and then I got to watch the passion of Christ to remind me of the suffering that Christ went through just for me. I got to block the world out and what the world's doing and think about what God done for Gary Mack. How far he brought me. How he kept me when I should have been dead and in my grave. God kept me and restored me. He, he cleaned me up, gave me a new walk and a new talk. And all the goodness that the Lord done for me, I still look at him and say, Lord, why are you punishing me? Why? Why am I going through this mess? I, I, I need somebody talking to me. You, have you been there? You might be going through it right now. Lord, I want to serve you. I want to do my best. But Lord, something in me keep warning against doing right. I know what I'm talking about, Deacon Kenny. You know why? My passion for serving God and serving others got tainted. Because I started listening to the world more than listening to God. The things I believed in and nobody could shake me, I began to question. Because sometimes you look at great leaders, pastors that you admire and you grew up under, you hear their views change. But I come to tell you, believers, you got to build your own relationship with your God. You got to pray and ask God. The Bible says in the book of James, if any man, chapter 1, if any man lacking wisdom, he said, let him ask of God. That means if you're struggling anywhere with your knowledge or understanding of God, there's no more asking the world. Get on your knees because guess what? When I died on the cross, I put a veil that was in the temple. Now you can come boldly before the throne of grace. Yeah. And you can ask your God what you stand in need of. We struggle with these things as believers. And we get wore out doing church service. Mm -hmm. Doing church business. Mm -hmm. And our compassion and love for others faded away slowly. When we put our gift on hold, thinking about trying to train others, when we can't make others do nothing they don't want to do, Amen. our gift and what God calls us to do, we set it aside and said, 
I've been doing this too long. Right. Your children, your grandchildren, needs you right now. I don't know if y'all know or not, but I your children, my son, my daughters, the ones that grew up here in Port Norris and now in Bonham, been under heavy spiritual attack because the devil knows he can't get us. But he do know what he can do to hinder your prayer, to take your compassion away, to take your anointing away, take that spirit of that, that bubbly spirit you had knowing that I'm convinced that if God can't do it, can't nobody else do it. We understand that once appointed to man to die and then the judgment, we know that, Nicky Kenny, but we still got tears that come down our faces when we lose somebody that we love. But God said, we're not supposed to mourn and cry as if we don't have hope, because our hope is in him. We know one day we're going to see them again. All these pressures come on us. Attacking our children, our grandchildren. They sit, they get, they got sickness coming from every direction. Then they got the social media that can get it and tell them what's going on across the world. And they got so many opinions. Now the word of God is being questioned. Is God really real? That's what we do with it. They heard us tell how good God was. And because of weight, because we look at God as being the enemy. And we start fighting with God. Our anointing, our testimony. We get to fade away. God is not genuine. For God so love us and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten son so that whosoever Believe and trust in him as Savior shall not perish, but he had everlasting life. Do you know the way that this world can have you forget that this is not our home? Y'all can talk back to me because they think I'm talking to nobody, but y'all here. Y'all can say amen. Let, 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 the, let those who are watching right here hear you say amen because I want to let them know that you're not alone. No, you're not crazy. No, you're not, you're not by yourself. You got believers that go through this. But the Lord had to tell me, this is the reason why I got the title. I was going through my pity party and complaining and saying, Lord, why? Heard Pastor Duncan preach. I heard many uh, great preachers preaching and encouraged me through the word of God. Joyce Meyer came on. I don't really want to listen to Joyce Meyer. But Joyce Meyer got on there and said, stop fighting with God. And then the revelation dropped in my spirit. I said, all this time. I want to blame the enemy. I want to blame my flesh, which they will attack you, and they are the enemy in time. But I was blaming God. I said, Lord, you got control of all things. Why are you allowing me to go through this right now? I can't praise you like I want to because of what I'm going through. And God said, yes, you can. Wow. But you're fighting with the wrong one. I need to let you know, young man, you ain't going to win this one. Because I got a purpose and a plan for you. And my purpose is going to come to pass, whether you like it or not. He said, I called you to minister. He said, I gave you my word to deliver to my people. Now do what I called you to do. Don't worry about your circumstances. Don't worry about you just almost cut somebody out the day before. And in the, and the, <laughs> and the same day, I still called you. We allow the enemy to speak louder than God. Remember, God knew that before he hung on that cross. He knew all about you. We would have let the little things trip us up for being effective, cause us to lose our compassion to minister the word of God to others. Somebody said, get to a scripture. I'm going. <laughs> there is no evil in God. No, I had to make that clear. Yeah. This, this is my intro. I had to make that clear before I get to the text. There is no evil in God. First John. One in five, the Bible says, this is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. Can I get an amen in here? Amen. You got to know there is no darkness in God. And if there's any darkness hung you, if there's any spirits been driving you on your back, around you, you got to know it ain't no God. Yes, God. But the Bible says he will always make a way of escape for his people. Yeah. God has set you up for a blessing. God has set you up for deliverance. Because, you know what? There is no evil in him at all. And declare to you, God is 
light, and in him there is no darkness at all. While evil does exist, the inherent character of God suggests that he did not, he did not create it. In fact, when he finished creating the world and it, God said everything was good. Everything that he created. The angels and humans. Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. Genesis tells us that God saw all things that he had made and said it was very good. But while God did not create evil, he did create the angels. And he created humans with the ability to choose right from wrong. Unfortunately, <laughs> most of those choices turn out to be wicked and grievous. You gotta realize what your makeup was before Christ called you and drew you to him. You gotta step back sometime, dig in how and realize how much damage you could have caused without him. And how much damage you could cause with him. Because the Bible says we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And because we had that sin nature, that sin nature hadn't went anywhere. It's still abiding with you right now. And that's what you're wrestling with. And it does affect your ability to be able to communicate, to be able to witness, but most of all, to stand. What does the stand mean? A lot of people think, you know, I'm saying I'm standing. I'm still going to church and I'm still reading my Bible. No, standing is when all hell breaks out and loose around you. And you can stand, Brother Rich, with tears coming down your eyes. Pain going from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Not knowing what the diagnosis is. And then when you get it, that fear. Remember, because you're human. And you got a spiritual being. You have God's spirit in you. And they're both wrestling. You get that diagnosis. And it tells you you have cancer. You have no idea how much fear that can bring over you. Knowing that you have a God say, I will never leave you. Nor will I forsake you. You say, how can God be our enemy when we say that's how. Imagine, imagine. It's my son right there. I'm going to my son saying, listen, I got you. I'm protecting what you need. Hey, I got you back. I ain't going to let nobody hurt you. And then my son said, you know what? Dad, you, ain't, you can't protect me. I'm going to go out there home. I'm going to do what I want to do. How, how would that make me feel? Imagine how God feels. When he sacrificed, God sacrificed his son to die on your behalf. And he said, all you have to do is believe in my son. And he said, no matter where you go, I will never leave you nor forsake you. When you call upon him, when you pray, pray in the name of Jesus. Believe by faith according to his word. And you can have exactly what you want. What it is, sister, I'm being be honest with you. Even in 2 Timothy, when I was reading about uh, blessing the food. A lot of times we go on diets and we do all this thing, we got to eat right. I'm not telling people not to eat right. But the reason why most of us stay sick, can, because we really haven't learned how to bless our food. I, I know what I'm talking about. A lot of times I sit down and eat, bless the food and bring good. Or we, somebody's birthday party or celebration, Lord, bless the food and bring nourishment and spread our body. No meaning behind it. We got, that prayer ain't went past that. But when you really thankful, when you see people out there don't have food to eat, no place to stay, and when you got a meal in front of you, and you sit in a warm house, and you really thought about how far God brought you, and you should have been burning in hell, but God kept you, and he provided for you and your family, and you sit down there before a good meal that you don't cook on your stove that God bless you with, and you say, Lord, I thank you. Yeah. Lord, I thank you for this meal. And Lord, I Get you already know that. 
But I want to let you know that God is omnipresent. But we don't always believe that. I had to get an MRI because they didn't know what no was wrong with my shoulder. I was going through that back and forth. I had an ultrasound. I had an x-ray. And then they finally had to do the MRI. I'm like, what took y'all so long? Yeah, I know it took so long. They wanted my money. Uh-huh. But when I finally had to do the MRI, and they would put me in that tunnel, and they gave me this thing to squeeze that said, you get afraid of uncomfortable, hit it. I wanted to hit it, so they were pushing me up in that thing. But I prayed. I said, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I had to remember that he was omnipresent God. Yes. In that tunnel, guess what? God was right in there with me. Amen. And she said, what kind of music do you want? I said, give me some gospel music. And God took me through that. And God had to remind me. See? You let the anxiety take over. I, I heard white people talk. Oh, 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 oh. I heard people of another color talk about anxiety. We heard it. But as a black guy, I didn't know what the anxiety was. But anxiety to make you forget everything that was in the Word of God when you're going through. Anxiety can be so heavy on you. That pressure can be so on you so heavy that you don't even believe that God even exists, that God even hear your prayer. I know what I'm talking about. Say the preacher the gospel like, Lord, where are you right now? I oh, Lord, you said in Lord, in the name of Jesus, by faith, I'm praying and sweating. And the Lord ain't moving. There's, there's two things. I need to skip here real quick. There's two things I need to run by you real quick. And I'll get back to the yeah, regular periods. All right. Let's discuss. Something God, sometimes God seems cruel in his decision making. Please take notes. There is times when God will cut off his provision and stop providing things for you in your life. Can y'all hear, y'all hear what I'm saying? We know God has a provider, right? We know he always uh, opened the door for provision, making a way for us. There's times where, there's two times that I know that God will stop providing for you as believers. That one thing is when it's time for you to go home and be with the Lord. I know what I'm talking about. When, when you're done, when your time is up, you know, you, I done had some older people in my life when they were leaving in the hospital, they stopped eating. God stopped providing for them. Guess what? Because his plan for them is to come home. Your prayer ain't going to work. That's when God, that's one of the times God stopped providing for you. And you know what the second thing is? When you go against the purpose that God had planned for you. God, God ain't going to let his plan go to sleep. If Moses said, I can't speak good, I, I have a slow tongue. God said, hey, you know what? You ain't got to speak. I got to answer. Because my purpose and my plan to set my people free. Oh, oh, is it going to come to pass? Oh, Gary, oh, you want to, you want to preach because your anxiety is Oh, guess what? I, I don't raise your granddaughter up to grab this mic and preach the gospel. But guess what? It's going to go forward. God will stop providing or stop provision for those two things. When he knows your time is up. When your body shut down. Your body don't want to drink. You don't want to eat. God stopped providing because he got a bigger plan for you. He said, your work down here is done. Your race has been won. You're coming home now. It made me think of losing my mom and dad when I prayed and asked God to restore them and bring them back. And those prayers didn't work. You know why? Because God had a plan for them. He said, they've done enough. They're tired right now. They're coming home to me. I'm going to stop providing for them. But I'm going to provide for you. Because what the Lord did today had, I'm going to pass it on to you. That's why people say, you look like your dad. You sound like your mom. You... Because it's been passed on. Because God's purpose and plan puts less forever. Until he calls on. When your purpose, when you stop walking in God's purpose, your purpose, what is your purpose? You get What good gift come natural to you? You, you know what? I, one thing I found, my, I got a grandson that's blind, autistic, nonverbal. And my daughter comes every now and then, she's got to sit in the back with him and kind of distract me sometimes when you want to act up. We got a church full of nurses. Church full of gifts. Because the way the world, when you're doing your gift and it's wearing you out, 
When you get in God's house, you don't want to give care to nobody. You want to get that word. But do you know how to clean a toilet that's doing work for God? I'm making God's house clean. I'll put my hands to work. Anything you do to somebody, I can't hear the word if I'm tending to somebody who needs care. But guess what? He said, when you do it to the least of them, you're doing it unto me. Well, sometimes we forget what the servant of God is. God, when the, when the Samaritan, when the good Samaritan, when he seen him laying on the side of the road, the church folks were too busy. Yeah. I'm going to church. Other or they were too afraid. Now, I know there's been a spiritual attack on my son and the young people his age. All of them. All of them. I, I talked to them. They went through the same thing. I said, Lord, what is this? He said, because I gave them a gift. Mm -hmm. I need you here. Yes. And guess what? He gave us, I'm talking about senior saints here, mm -hmm. the ones that been in church for a while. He made us a fence to build around them to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. Young man, um, you, you, you don't belong out there. Mm -hmm. No, not, not tell them what to do, but no, 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 stay in these boundaries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because of the weight, and because we man of God, because God had to answer our prayers. We sit down on our gift. I hope you all see where I'm going with this thing. We've been mad with God. I'm telling you right now, God is not your enemy. But God is not going to change. He's not a God to change now. I'm the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. He's not going to change if we're going to divert his purpose. And his plan for you. Jeremiah 29, 11. Say, I know, I know the thoughts and the plans I have for you. Good and not evil. We got to take God at his word. It was so good to Jeremiah in the third, third chapter, the third verse. He said, he said, Lord, I know when I pray. You're going to show me some things I ain't never seen before. Because when I was down and out, when I cried and I tried to run for my purpose, Lord, you put fire back in my bones. Jeremiah said, like fire shut in my bones. I, I, I tried to suppress it. I tried to sit down on my gift, but I had to get back up. And stir up that gift that's on the inside of me. God has a plan for you. Now let's go to the chapter. Chapter 11, verse 1. Before we go there, Marshall Band, he's an a, a author. And in the book, I briefly read some of his, the summary of some inserts that he had. And he's talking about the purpose. He said, purpose is what life called out of you. Purpose is what life called out of you, meaning your life experience. All the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows, develop the purpose that God has for you. All the tears that you shed, all the mountains you had to climb, all the obstacles you had to go through. Paul said, my suffering, my suffering wasn't for me, but it was for the glory of God. I went through killing Christians. I went through all of that saying I'm doing it in the name of God just to be on the road to the master and run into Jesus to find out I was going down the wrong direction. We think we're doing right because church etiquette and what we do, our responsibilities sound good. But how many young men, hear me out, I know about the guns, I know all about that. I know about the guns, I know these cats are crazy out there. But how many times, how many opportunities you miss but just tell them, brother, you know what, God loves you. You don't have to live like that and walk away. So many times the Lord said, you wanted to give them too much that they weren't ready to handle. Yeah. All I needed them to know is that I love them. And I was thinking about them. i never forget my grandmother telling me when I was working. I used to always hide from them. My uncles and aunts, when I see them coming, I see them at cow time. I'm hiding and ducking from them. I know you're going to tell me about the Lord. I was running. I knew it was the right direction to go. But I still want to get high. That weed still calling me. That weed had me. That tanger ain't had me. I ain't had it. You know, that, I, I had, you know, that, that not in it. It had me. Made my good hand out of it. <laughs> These are things that I was wanting to hold on to when they were saying, stop running for your time run out. And I never forget my grandma said, and I get chills today. My grandma died in 2010. But you know what she said to me, thinking about it? She said this to me. She said, the God that gave you the very air that you breathe, bless you with a good job. You got a good job, good position. 
You got a beautiful family. You got a roof and a shelter. You got clothes on your back. And she said, you can't get your crap up to go to church and give God up one hour. One hour. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Praise Praise you. you don't know the power of your word. I was feeling sick. Mm -hmm. But her word, because she loved and feared and reverenced God. Where is our love and reverence for God at? We don't got lazy in our spirit. We don't got caught up just going to church and doing church things. Oh, we got a program going on. We need to acknowledge this. We need to celebrate this. We need to. He said, I'll be lifted up. If you come into those doors or in your bedroom and you get on your knees before you go to bed with a sincere heart, he said, I'll be lifted up. If you tell people how good I am, he said, if I be lifted up. If you tell those who are sick and God is still healed, he said, if I be lifted up. He said, I draw, I draw your kids, I draw your grandkids, I draw the younger generation, but they need to see me. You put me down. You laid me down. Martha and Mary, they knew God. They were church folks. But they didn't get their prayers answered. And they thought God was in. If you had a been here, somebody I love would be gone. God said, you can't see. She said, look what Martha said, Lord, I know. I know the day of resurrection. I, I, I. John, I'll check the letter. Let's go ahead. You need to see it. I know we don't have it. Can I get somebody to read? Chapter 1 to 5. Chapter 11, verse 1 to 5. Uh, now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, village of Mark, village of Mary and her sister Martha. His Mary and his brother Lazarus out a sick was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord's on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness is not in this sickness will not end in death. No, mm. it's for God's glory. Mm. So that God's Son may be glorified. Because we don't walk in our purpose, Brother Rich. Thank you, thank you. I hope you all those who are watching, you see it on the screen. Mary and Martha sent word for Jesus. They knew Jesus was close to them, as we talked about earlier. They sent word. And said, the one you love, the one that's close to you, you still, look look deep within this verse. You still let him die. You, 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 you still let him die. And it says, this was the Mary, the same Mary, that anointed Jesus' feet. It was a reason why they put that in there. Because Mary, out of the two, Mary always chose the right thing. To sit at the feet of God. And here she was again. When, the, when Martha came, when Jesus came to the area to visit Bethany, that's where they lived at. When Jesus came to visit that family, Martha was busy cooking. Ain't got nothing to do with works. Now, I don't want to get into no about the works of faith. I don't know. I don't want to get into that. I think you need to be doing both. Mary was tending to doing a regular job. She wasn't doing nothing wrong. Martha, excuse me. Martha wasn't doing anything wrong. But it said Mary chose the better thing to sit at Jesus' feet. If we can get back to sitting at Jesus' feet, sitting underneath the Word of God. I, I was telling my son the other day, too, when we were talking, I said, listen, you can't eat out of everybody's plate. And, and, and let me explain, I need, I need to park there. Y'all might have parked there. I'm talking to church folks. You might have got a pastor out there that you've been serving a long time. Don't be eating out of everybody's plate if you're mature enough to handle it. Because everybody that's speaking God's Word ain't speaking God's Word. And the thing is, everybody got their opinion now because of the, the you know, social media and the quick things they can get their hands on now. And they hear, they have a good testimony. The Bible says we're overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of testimony. But the blood of the Lamb is what covers you and keeps you and preserves you. And I was letting you know, I tell a lot of other young men, I said, you got to be careful what plate you eat out of. God said, Pastor Dunkins. Now, if I want to eat out another plate, I need to dismiss myself and go 
It ain't like you couldn't go visit another church. Please, we, we, we're more mature than that. I'm just telling you, don't eat from the plate where you receive and everything somebody said without being able to check it in the Word of God. Mary and Martha, they knew that Jesus Christ was the Son. They believed that He had the power, even though He had died on the cross. Jesus hadn't been resurrected yet. But somebody in that region, somebody was telling them about Jesus was coming. They seen some of the prophecies being fulfilled. They seen Jesus healing the blind and oh, calling the lame to walk. They seen the things that Jesus it was prophesied for the Messiah to do. And they believed in their heart that he was the one. Guess what? That could come into a dead situation and then come alive again. Martha don't believe that. Martha said, Lord, I know at the end, resurrection, that he will rise again. Jesus said, I, I believe he was crying then. I ain't changing the word of God. Don't think I'm changing the word of God. I think he was crying for Mary like that. He said, I am the resurrection. I'm everything you need. I come to tell somebody tonight who might be listening. Jesus is really everything you need. And I apologize if I misled anybody and didn't let my light shine. But you know what? Because all the chaos and the hell that I went through to get me to this point right now to realize that God wasn't my enemy. I had to tell somebody out there. I got to tell you here. That God's not you. He loved you too much. He loved you too much to turn around and let you go. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. There's no death in me. There's no darkness in me. There's no evil in me. He said, oh, Martha, I believe he said, Martha, if you really, if you really knew, you wouldn't be coming to me with this nonsense saying, Lord, if you were, had been here, if you only had been here, we want to look at that real lightly saying, oh, she was just upset. Of course she was. When did we act up? When did we act a fool? When we upset? Yeah. When our heart is crushed, when somebody, we lost a loved one, and things don't go our way. We made God the enemy. He been sitting up in heaven saying, I already sent my son. He came back to be with me. Then I left you comforter in the Holy Spirit that could be everywhere with you at every time of the day. Pick up your gift. Pick up your cross. Verse 6. So when they heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where Jesus stayed there two more days. I'm like, oh, what in the world? He stayed. He, he didn't leave. He didn't panic. He didn't say, Jesus, I'm going to go into the room, man. Uh, I'm, going, I'm going to the bank. I'm going to get a loan. He stayed there two more days. Because when you're confident in who you are, I'm talking to somebody tonight. Once you know who you are, can I, can I tell you something real quick? I, Mark chapter 5. This is the story that blew my mind. The man with the legion of demons. Jesus, I, I got to go that direction. Because I have a purpose and a plan for him. Do you know that there was demons in that man that said legion? It could have been 2,000 or 6,000 demons. I don't care if it was one. It was still causing that man to cut himself and, 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 and to howl at the moon like he a wolf. And then they say he had fetters and chains that he broke because he was so strong. And it said that no man, no man could contain him. Meaning they didn't have the earthly strength of the human strength to be able to tame this man that had all these demons in him. But thank you to God. Come on, y'all. I need somebody to pray to God in here. Somebody help me out. I feel like shot right now. Thank you to God. He understands our moans and our groans. Those demons could not keep his inner man quiet. Because I believe even though Jesus was many miles away, I believe that inner spirit man in him that had all those demons said, Say it with our lips, but in our heart, 
We say, Lord, oh, about time. I, I always had a problem on my job. Everybody, you know, raise time. Everybody I want money, and they forget I want some money too. I'm a supervisor. I want to raise too. I'm a manager. And you, you try to tell them what they need to do to get it. You know, you got to do this, make sure you attend this bit, all that. And they forget that you feel the same way they do, but you still got to still gotta do my job. Yeah. I still got to act like a company man. I can still treat you with all the respect and decency, but I got a job to do. We need to get back and plant our feet, get back in line and do our job. Stop blaming God. Because God ain't going to change. He ain't going to win. But we need to let them know that the same thing I've done to get where I am at, you can do the same thing. Can't have all the chief, but there's some things you can do to improve. And that's the same thing with believers. There's some things we can do to make our God satisfied and proud of us. With a blessing, not only flow to you, but flow down to your children and your children's children. He waited two days, and then they saw his disciples. He said, let us go back to Judea. Judah. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews was there, they were trying to stone you. Here's where the fear come in at. Remember I told you, I know they got guns out there in the street, but you got to remember, he said, I'm before you. I'm more than the whole world against you. And because we don't want to do it God's way, we want to do it our way. We want to say, man, you know, we want to talk to people out of character when God said, I didn't ask you to talk to them like that. I didn't ask you to talk to them like that. I remember my uncle Joe, he pastor the twin. I remember there was a young man came into this church who was demon possessed. It blew my mind when I seen the strength he had. It was deacons and grabbing, men grabbing, he was slinging around like, young little small dude. Just slinging around like nothing. And I was scared of that on the what. I wasn't saved. Felt like something was about to jump out my heart on was demon within me or what. But like I just I just was fearful. But I seen my uncle, the pastor, who was confident in who he was in Christ. Then can I see him walk down? I'm telling you, if you walk in your purpose and you do what God called you to do, yeah. I'm gonna tell you the, the, the power that you possess. You know what he did? He walked down to everybody backing up and he said, Y'all don't believe, hey, y'all get out of here, y'all want to pray, don't be going to lay hands on us. If you're scared, get out of here. I need some prayer words in here. And you know what he did? He walked right down those steps, and he hugged that young man, and that young man melted in his arms. Just like in Mark chapter 5, Jesus saw past those demons, those legions, that were trying to take our young people captive. And guess what? All the people in the village didn't have the power to cast out the demon. They were amazed. And because they were so worldly, when he did cast it in, when he set somebody free that was in bondage, you would have thought they would have celebrated. He allowed the, the spirit to go into the swine. But here with money and greed come in. Lord, you don't wreck my business. Not knowing he was the resurrection and the life, he could have provided for them anything they need. I don't want the church folk to lose focus on who our God is and what he's able to do. What he did in the Bible, he'll do it for you. But we got to stand and stand on his word and believe his word. But Rabbi, they were trying to kill you. They were trying to stone you. And you want to go back there? That's how we talk. I remember I said, they want to go out of the way of these. I don't want to go out of the way of these. I don't want to go out there. They're shooting out there. No. But if my son was out there, my brother got killed out there in Amity Heights. I don't want to go out there. I had to wind up. When I got called to preach, that was one of the places I had to go preach at. Amen. And I preached the message. I never forget the message. See, the message was titled, I, He Came Just For You. And people got saved. We don't know what God would do if we never step out on faith. Mary and Martha. Jesus, verse 9. Jesus answered, and there were 12 hours in the day. He said, 12 hours in the day. In the daylight. 
Anyone who walk in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. They see what the world see. The world do. He said, it is when a person walk at night that they stumble, for they have no light. They have no light. We don't forget what the power of God's light is. His love, his presence, his anointing, the gift that he gave you. God will blow on your gift. People, I, I, I said it, people say, no, I, I still don't know what my purpose is. Jesus said, my purpose is to do the will of my Father who sent me. If you're having any problem with what you should be doing in your purpose, I recommend that you read chapter Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, and Jesus will show you what you should do. He'll tell you about the Beatitudes. He'll show you how to pray in chapter 6. He'll show you the struggles you might have to go through, but still keep moving and pressing on. Are y'all hearing me tonight? Yes, sir. God is not your enemy. I'm going to get to it. Verse 11. After he had said this, he wanted, went on to tell them, friends of Lazarus, Lazarus had fallen asleep, but I am going to wake him up. Jesus spoke in parables to those who didn't understand his word. And at the time, a lot of his disciples didn't need it because they didn't have a problem going back later on and saying, Jesus, what do you mean by that parable? But oftentimes, I, 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 I'm, I'm concerned about myself even though I'm saved, I said, Lord, the, the, the parable of the sower. When the seed was sown, the word of God was sown, and I received it. Lord, am I good ground? Y'all might not think like that, but I do. You know why? Because I know one day I'm going to leave here. Mm -hmm. I, I do not want to wind up in hell after all of what I yeah. think I've done, done and how I trusted God. Sometimes I ask, Lord, am I in the thorny ground? Am I the one? Because my actions, I'm, I'm going somewhere now. Because of my actions, when things don't go my way, I get mad. I get so irate. I forget about the goodness of the Lord. Lord, am I that stony ground? Am I that stony ground? That when I receive the word of God and then the way of the world comes and then all of a sudden I fall apart. If you haven't thought that, you need, you need to start checking yourself on that. Because good prayer ought to be producing some good fruit. And if you've been sitting here and come to church, and you ain't producing no good fruit. It ain't too late. No. You know why it ain't too late? Because God had to tell me, I'm not your enemy, dude. I ain't your enemy. But I'm your dad. I'm going to tell you how it is. You ain't got to like it. But you ought to love it. Because I love you. I care about you. And those who I love, I'm going to whoop that tail if I love him. He said, those he loved, he would chance it. He would correct he would stand firm and say, well, you, don't have to, you don't have to believe me. But I pray that you will. Because you're going to be benefit from this. This is what God has been trying to tell us. And in this text, there's so many different stories I could have pulled from. But the Lord led me to Mary and Martha. Because he wanted to show me and he wanted me to show my listeners that they loved him. But they still thought he was the enemy when things didn't go their way. When they loved one, Lazarus had died. He said, Jesus, you was with him. All these other bad people out there, they're still living. They've been drinking for years. Mm -hmm. They've been getting out there. They still out there drinking in the club. You want to take my mom? My mom was 46 years old when she passed away. I was 14 years old. And thinking how I still wrestle with that sometimes. Like, oh, why? And then I quickly remind myself, boy, you know best. You're going to always have that. I'm talking to somebody here tonight. You're always going to have that battle. And you're always going to blame God. You know why you're going to blame God? Because you know you got the power to change it. But God's purpose and plan is bigger than that. He's not going to waver. He didn't bring him back. But you know what he did? He gave me more wisdom and knowledge and experience. So now, Sister Vicki, when some, I'm witness to somebody else, i got more to tell. I can say, yeah, I can, I can let her know ahead of time. You know what? Stop blaming God. God is doing the show me the word. It says many people like Mary and Martha, Jacob, uh, Paul. Paul said, I prayed three times for this thing to go away. I don't know exactly what it was. 
But what is it you're praying for for God to take away? God said, no. My grace. My grace is all you need. The thing, you know, uh, Speak up loud, please. Uh, the, the, the trials that everybody go through, if that ain't your first trial. No, no sir. If that ain't your first trial, and it's not going to be your last one. And if you, if you made it through your first trial, Really, nothing changes. Nothing changes. You know what I mean? As far as us going through uh, sickness, death, this, or losing a loved one, you know, and, and when, you, when your time is up, your time really is up. It's up. And that ain't the first time that that's been happened to a family member. You lost your mom, you lost your dad, you lost your one of your sisters and brother. And all you can do, man, is, is keep on loving. Yeah. Until the very end. That's all you can do. And right now, keep on loving and trusting. And then you don't have no end. Think what people fall apart, getting anxiety and all that. There, when you evil as hell. Mm -hmm. okay. you, you evil, and you don't know how to forget somebody or love somebody. And man, that's where you will fall. That's where you going you gonna fall in all your your turmoil at because you, you don't get to that point right there, man. I, I was I was talking to a gentleman. You, you still have church. I don't know. He don't mind me sharing the story. Um, until you go through what some people been through, he felt the same way you felt, then Kenny, until somebody raped his little daughter. A grown man taking advantage of a young child. There's some things that can happen in your life that just take the feet right underneath you. You 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 can say I ain't I ain't evil, I ain't nasty. But there's something can take you from a zero to a hundred and a minute, and the devil knows that. Yeah. But guess who else knows it? God knows that. That's what we wrestle with, with God. That's why we thank God sometimes. And I know we ain't calling God the enemy, but sometimes because our actions, we treat him like that. Like, Lord, because you didn't do that, I'm shut down. I'm not going to operate in my gift. I ain't going to be that light. I ain't going to be that bumpy person I used to be. Let somebody else do it. That's when we get bitter and cantankerous. Because we blame blaming God, like, Lord, you could have fixed that. Lord, Lord, you should have been here. My brother wouldn't have died. This story is deep. It's, it's not a shallow message. It's not a shallow story. God said, I need to let you know that these people that were close to me, and for a moment how they felt, and I had to bring comfort. But Christ is gone. Guess who got to bring the comfort now? Why we hurt him? He got to go through a crucifixion. Remember in the garden when Jesus prayed? He said, Lord, it, 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 it will. The, 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 the person that murdered your, your brother right there, uh -huh. they're still living. They're still living. Still living. Right seen him in the, seen him in the, in the line, grocery line. And then sometimes, sometimes you, look like you, you don't know how you're going to react at a given time. But as time went past, you, your heart got, uh, your heart got more cleaner. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because right when it first happened, you, 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 you was... I wanted to get in jail and get him. Yeah, you wanted to get him. But as time went on, man, you, you, look, look where you're at. Look, but you know what? What, what, what the thing is, is that, then can I see him? I'm at the count. I'm going to get to you. But you know what had to happen? I had to trust God. Yeah. I couldn't do it on my own. No, sure. I couldn't. I couldn't. And that's what I'm trying to say tonight, that God said, not your enemy. Join in with me, and let's see what we can do together. Dean, I'll go ahead, sir. I was going to say, through it all, one of the things that God requires is forgiveness. One minute. We got one minute. Forgiveness covers a multitude of stuff. Yeah. And doing what he did to forgive us, she mm -hmm. why I said, how many times shall I forgive a brother? Seven times? He said, no, 70 times seven. In one day. In one day. So, I can understand a person being angry and being mad. But as time goes on, and you're in church, especially being in the household of faith. Something got to get. Something got, got to get. That word supersedes and penetrates. Yeah. I, w I want to say to my listeners, we're very close, and um, we're going to continue this after the camera go off. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to thank you for listening. This is just the intro of where God has taken us. God is not your enemy, and you're fighting against sin, you're not going to win. If you want to win, if you want to be on the winning team, I recommend you give your heart to Christ. 
I make a record that you connect yourself with a Bible believing church where the word of God is taught with love, authority, and clarity. We have a church here, we're both meeting the shout about the church. We have one church at two locations, Fort Norris and Vaughn, our senior pastor, Pastor James L. Duncans. I want to say we signing off. God bless you. We love you. And until we meet again, uh, let's pray for our pastor. And those of anybody sick out there, we pray for the healing. But most of all, God is not your enemy. And I'm I pray that this message help you to trust God and depend on Him because He is the only way out to our salvation. He is the only way to our freedom. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.